Hey guys, this video is going to be on energy, quantum leaps, light, and photons. Okay, so recall that atoms are surrounded by orbitals that hold electrons, right? This is Schrodinger's electron cloud model. Okay, also recall from class today uh, the off ball principle that states that electrons prefer the lowest energy state possible. This is what we refer to as their ground state. Think of, say, the ground floor of a building, right? It's gonna be your, your lowest floor possible, okay? Um, it was Max Planck uh, who popularized and, and discovered that matter uh, cannot absorb or emit really uh, just you know, any amount of energy, okay? Uh, energy is said to be quantized. This is to say that is gained, or perhaps lost, in whole number multiples, okay? So we're talking about specific kind of allowable energies. On this energy, we can actually calculate uh, using Planck's constant uh, multiplied by mu, which is just the frequency. Okay, we'll come back to this equation here in a moment. Um, and then it was Einstein, actually, who suggested that electromagnetic radiation can exhibit you know, a lot of the same behaviors, a lot of the same properties as matter itself. Okay. This gets into the kind of the wave particle duality, uh, but bottom line is that electromagnetic radiation, right? So radio waves, microwaves, infrared, so on and so forth, all the way through gamma can in some capacity be viewed as a stream of particles. And it's this stream of you know, particles and kind of air quotes there um, that we can call photons. Okay, so a photon is really just a packet of energy. Um, you know, it's this quantized uh, kind of, a, again, allowable, specific energy of light. And again, light's kind of a generic term. Really, we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, okay? Um, before we move on and we talk kind of the conceptual side of things, uh, and we get into a little bit of mathematics, uh, just a quick reminder from some things we probably recall from last year's chemistry course, okay? Uh, when we talk about a continuous spectrum, okay, so say like a rainbow, the idea with that rainbow is that it's really just white light, and we're going to have to use a prism, so normally some type of crystal, that will diffract that light that, bas that basically splits it up into its component wavelengths. Okay, that's how we see you know, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, so on and so forth, as opposed to just the overall appearance. So again, we need something uh, that's going to diffract uh, that overall color of light into component wavelengths. Um, that being said, when we talk about hydrogen, okay, which is, you know, obviously the, the simplest atom to deal with and the one that, that Bohr uh, used as far as, you know, developing his model and his mathematics, um, whenever hydrogen is absorbing energy, okay, that single electron is going to become excited and that can move to a higher energy state, right? So some other principal um, quantum number. Uh, it can go from one to two to three to four, so on and so forth. Okay. At some point, that excited electron is going to fall back to its ground state, right? And instead of falling back, we could use the term relaxes back to its ground state. It's negative, the nucleus is positive. Okay, that should make sense there. Um, as this electron releases the energy that it had previously absorbed, it's going to do so in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, and very often, uh, that's actually going to be in the visible uh, region as far as that spectrum goes. Um, it's these bands of light that will sum together towards some outward appearance, right? Um, it's that outward appearance of light that we can break down, right? We can split by using some prism to see these component wavelengths, okay? So just as kind of an example here, this is what we're talking about. So imagine we have that electron in the first energy level for hydrogen, okay? And again, that's in the ground state. Now we're gonna introduce some energy, right? Some quantized amount. And we can do that through the form of say light, heat, friction, electricity, there's a number of different ways that we can excite that electron, in this case, say up to the third energy level, okay? Now eventually, that electron doesn't want to continue to be in the excited state, so it relaxes, it falls back down to its ground state. And this energy that it had previously absorbed here, it's going to now release in the form of light. Again, light being a generic term for, um, for um, electromagnetic radiation, okay? Uh, this is the spectrum, right? So we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, pretty familiar there, uh, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma. Uh, the visible I've kind of uh, broken out into our familiar Roy G. Biv. Now on the left side of our spectrum here, right, towards radio waves, 
and what would be kind of like red once we get to visible, we're talking about low energy waves, right? These things have super long wavelengths, uh, a really low frequency, right? Again, recall that frequency is just the number of cycles per second. How often does the wave really repeat itself, okay? Um, on the other side of our spectrum, say up towards gamma, we're backtracking if we were more on the, you know, the violet side of our visible region there, we're talking about high energy waves, right? Really, really short wavelength. And because the wavelength is so short, we're talking about that wave's ability to repeat itself uh, as having a really, really high frequency, okay? Um, so let's, let's kind of talk about electron transitions and see if we can't then to begin to talk about um, you know, associating this kind of conceptually, just conceptually for now, with, uh, with a color, okay? So let's say we're given the following, what we call Jablonski diagrams. The term isn't super important. But in this first scenario here, we have that single electron that hydrogen has, gets excited up to the fourth energy level. And in one false swoop, you know, falls back down to its ground state. Okay. Now, this is a pretty substantial you know, amount of energy that's released. So the way that I might represent that conceptually, if we are to assign it a color in the visible spectrum, is you know, I'm probably given that violet, right? That's going to be of high energy, a uh, really short wavelength, high frequency there. Okay, so violet to me makes sense. Okay. And again, this is just one single photon uh, worth, of, uh, worth of energy or worth of light there. Now, in the second scenario, we still have... Um, an electron in the first energy level for hydrogen, it gets perhaps maybe a little bit more energy and gets excited up to the fifth energy level or N equals five there. But instead of immediately falling back down to its ground state, it does so in kind of you know, multiple successive steps. So maybe it goes from five to four, uh, not a huge jump there or fall, I should say. And then maybe from four to two, and then finally from two to one back down to its ground state. So what I've done is I've tried to attribute these um, these falls of electrons to a color of light in the visible region. Uh, given that we are not really, you know, releasing that much energy and going from N5 to N4, you know, this wavelength right here, the second one here, has a pretty substantial wavelength, right? Not a lot of energy, uh, pretty high, um, sorry, pretty sh low frequency there. And as a result, I'm gonna assign that red. Again, one photon of light, because it's one electron transition or energy level transition. Uh, here we see something maybe a little bit more substantial. So we have a shorter wavelength, higher frequency, a little bit higher energy. Uh, again, as we move kind of to the right on our Roy G. Biv scale here, uh, you know, maybe we attribute this to orange. Okay, something of higher energy though for sure. And finally, uh, you know, this interval is pretty close to this interval. You know, I think maybe four wins out. And so I'm going to assign it just a little bit more energy up in green here. And the way that I've depicted that, again, is with uh, shorter wavelength, higher frequency. Okay. And again, this is all conceptual. This is all conceptual right now. We'd actually have to crunch the numbers in order to verify that. And so that's where we're heading. Uh, again, taking a look back at this equation, you know, the amount of energy is equivalent to Planck's constant times by the frequency for any particular photon, okay? Now, if we don't have the frequency in hand, no worries. Uh, we know that the frequency is equivalent to the speed of light divided by its wavelength. So if we had wavelength, we could solve for frequency. If we had frequency, in turn, we could manipulate and solve for wavelength, okay? The speed of light, depending on where you're seeing it, about three times 10 to the eighth, uh, 10 raised to the eighth uh, meters per second. So what we want to do is we don't want to talk about this in conceptual terms, right? We don't want to qualify it. We would like to quantify it to, you know, validate what we're kind of thinking. And so the change in energy of an electron going from an N high state, so some higher energy level, say four, uh, down to some N low, uh, we can do some math and we can actually determine that. And we can go all the way to figure out what the wavelength is and begin to attribute that to some area on our electromagnetic radiation spectrum, okay? Uh, to figure out if it is in fact visible light. And if it is, uh, per the wavelength, what color are we actually talking about, okay? So let's do that. Let's walk through a problem. Uh, what I have here in this scenario is an electron that uh, clearly is going to be an excited state. 
okay? So we're gonna say an electron falls from n equals seven to n equals two. So uh, given that it's falling down, we know that this is an excited state. Uh, I'm gonna label this as ground state, question mark. Uh, it's possible, uh, but we don't know for sure. It's ground state could actually be the first energy level, as we kind of saw in that last example. We know it's falling, we know it's releasing energy, question mark because it may or may not be its ground state. Maybe it still has another photon of light to release in order to make it down to n equals one. Um, so the equation that we have in hand is the following. We can find the change in energy uh, as an electron goes from an n high to an n low state by employing what's called the Rydberg constant, okay? Uh, so this is again our Rydberg constant. Uh, and we plug in some values, right? So seven for n high, and we square this term. Uh, we get one over 49. When we plug in two for the n low and square that term, we get one over four. Um, we crunch the numbers, our calculator shoots out a nice 5.005 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Okay, so some minimal amount of energy that's actually being released there. So this is step number one, right? Can we just determine the amount of energy that is released by a single photon as it transitions from N7 to N2. And we've done that, largely plug and chug on this one, okay? The follow would be, okay, so we have the energy in hand. Can we now talk about its frequency? This is the first equation we took a look at today, where the energy is equal to Planck's constant times by mu, again, mu representing frequency. Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule second. Uh, we rearrange, we bring this to the other side, uh, we divide, and we isolate that frequency as being 7.554 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. The other units we might see are hertz. Uh, I would default to inverse seconds. Uh, it's going to make unit cancellation a little bit easier here in a moment. Okay, so so far we've solved for the energy, and we've attributed that to a frequency for that particular wave. And kind of a final step, what I want to do is I want to determine where is this at on our spectrum? Right? Is it a radio wave? Is it an X-ray? I don't know. And the way to definitively determine that would be to figure out its wavelength. And so we know the speed of light is equal to frequency times by wavelength. Uh, we just got done solving for the frequency uh, so we can isolate for our wavelength. And what we find is that the wavelength is equal to 3.969 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Okay? We can convert that over to nanometers. That's gonna make that number a little bit more friendly to use. Uh, the way that I did that um, was exploiting the following relationship. I know that one meter is equal to one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. Okay, so simple conversion there. So now that I have this nanometer value in hand, uh, you guys will receive the spectrum in class tomorrow. Uh, it's something that now you could look up, but the visible spectrum, the visible portion of our um, electromagnetic radiation spectrum, I should say, spans from about 750 nanometers down to 380 nanometers down there for violet. Okay, again, violet has a shorter wavelength because it is of higher energy. So if we're at 396.9, I guess we don't have a you know definitive kind of scale here, but in all likelihood, we're probably going to be talking about violet light. Thanks, guys.